Hello and welcome to this tutorial that is tutorial 9 where we will be learning how to handle passive microwave observations. So, till the last tutorial that is tutorial 8 we learnt how to deal with active microwave data. Typically we try to analyze data from the Doppler weather radar, from NextRad and from the MOSDAQ website. So, here our focus will be on data from passive microwave remote sensing. So, let me take your attention to um, one particular slide that I had shown in the previous lectures that is how different satellite remote sensing missions help us to learn about hydrology in particular. There are missions that give us information about the groundwater. We learnt about GRACE satellite. And then there are missions that give us more information about surface water wherein we learnt about the fundamental principles of radar altimetry. And we also saw how to deal with data from satellites like JSON and SARL. So, here in this particular tutorial we will be trying to understand the data pertaining to soil moisture information that is obtained from satellites through the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, why soil moisture? Because you know it is a very crucial variable for numerical weather prediction and for climate models as well as for surface hydrology for vegetation monitoring. So, at L band frequency that is L band of the microwave region at L band frequency the sensitivity to soil moisture is very high. Okay? So, just to reiterate in today's tutorial we will be trying to look at which satellite missions give us information about soil moisture and in particular we will be trying to focus on the SMOS mission. Okay? So, a little bit about SMOS before we try to understand its data products. So, um, SMOS is abbreviation for soil moisture and ocean salinity. It is a satellite which is part of the European Space Agency that is ESA Living Planet Program and it is intended to provide us with new insights into the earth's water cycle. Okay? Um, SMOS is also known as ESA's water mission and it helps to improve our understanding of the earth's water cycle. In addition, um, for this tutorial we will be using the SMOS level 3 data, SMOS level 3 radiometric soil moisture retrievals obtained from the 43 kilometer mean spatial scale SMOS observations. So, you can obtain this data from the website, we will come to that shortly, but um, uh, let us explore the instruments on board the SMOS uh, satellite. So, if you go to the ESA website, European Space Agency website, it has details about the microwave imaging radiometer with aperture synthesis that is the instrument on board SMOS which is a passive microwave 2D interferometric radiometer operating in the L band, L band of the microwave region. And you can explore the site which gives you more details about the instrument and about how to access the data and you know a lot of details are available even the small toolbox is available details about that are available. So, if you are more interested to know about this mission I would urge you to visit the earth.esa.int website to get more details. So, as part of this tutorial, let us try to understand how to access the data first. Okay? So, um, what we do is to access the data you have to visit this particular website catds.fr. So, this archive as you see here the server gives us data from SMOS mission and you get data at different temporal aggregations 
ok. You can get 1 day soil moisture, 3 day soil moisture, 10 day soil moisture which has been aggregated temporarily to 1 day, 3 day and 10 day. So, um, if you just browse you can see L3 stands for level 3 soil moisture and also uh, you have the data that has been arranged over land and ocean, over land and over ocean. And as of now you can see that it, it is showing uh, a locked symbol which means you need to have your own user ID and password created before you can access, get access to these data products, ok. Okay. Uh, um, usually what happens is you click on the registration at the top corner of the window and once you click on that a window like this opens up and then you get to complete the registration and then you are allowed to log into the site. So, you can see that now I, I already have a user ID. So, I have logged into the site and then the interface what I see is this. So, if I click on uh, any product say the one day soil moisture, uh, the data details are shown, the starting date, ending date is shown for which data products are made available. Okay? Uh, I can click on any product say over land, over ocean and over land and ocean. So, if I continue clicking on the same product, it leads me to the data object selection, you know, uh, I can see the estimated size of the files and there are certain filter options that I am able to use. For example, I can decide on the starting and ending date, ok. And these options, these filters are available for any data set from the website, ok. You uh, feel free to explore. Let me try to look at the root zone soil moisture data which is also made available. You can see the filters in front of you. Let us try to specify a starting date and ending date for which you need the data. So, as an example, I can go to 2020 uh, Jan 1 and then I can give ending date as say. 2020 August ok. Now, after that the orbit type information is um, available ascending is 6 am local time and descending is 6 pm local time. The product type information is available, um, reprocessed data are made available and operational data are made available. So, I click on operational and then I can select the processor version. Now, coming on to the geographical selection that is over which area do you want the data to be downloaded. So, I can pan in and then create a geographical bounding box to mark the selection. So, what happens is all the satellite data that is available for the dates that I have specified that is from the starting date to the ending date, it gets uh, shown to you how many files are available for this particular bounding box that is region. Okay. So, you just draw a rectangle marking the bounding box ok, alright and the coordinates appear to you ok. So, for this exercise I have tried to see the files over Ganga Basin which is one of the largest river basins which lies in China, Nepal, India and Bangladesh. You can see the number of objects, number of files are given, its size is given. And you also get to select the format to archive or compress the data. So, I will click on zip and then one archive file per order. So, now the summary of my order gets displayed and I am going to submit the order. Okay. So, you get to uh, view the order submitted and also you can view the summary of your order in the summary order window towards the 
left side there. So, the order that I have just submitted is made visible in the user workspace. Once it is available a simple double click will let you download. So, the download window will appear and the compressed files can be saved to the desired location. Okay. All right. So, now let us see how to import and use these files in Python. So, um, as before the SMOS data are made available to us in the next CDF format. So, it is going to have an extension say .nc. So, what I have done is I have gone to the website, I have downloaded the root zone soil moisture data over Ganga Basin, I have created a bounding box and selected the area and I have given the starting date and ending date. So, all the SMOS level 3 root zone soil moisture data for that particular date and for that particular study region is going to be downloaded. I have downloaded and kept it in one particular region of my system and now I am going to import it into Python and see how the data looks like and how I can extract the relevant variables in Python. Okay. All right. So, as before I have created an empty Jupyter notebook and I have named it as tutorial 9 followed by name of this course. So, as before I need to import all the necessary libraries inside. Okay. Now, in case you do not have a few libraries installed, I would urge you to first visit the command prompt, install these libraries. We have already seen how to do that in a few tutorials and then once the same are installed you then import it from here. So, for this particular tutorial I need netcdf4 because as I mentioned the files have .nc they are in netcdf format and then for plotting I need matplotlib. Okay. So, let us try to open one single file to begin with. Okay. I am going to use the data set. So, to create a netcdf file from python you simply need to call the data set constructor. This is also the method for opening an existing netcdf file. So, what I am doing is I am using the data set and then I am trying to specify the path where the file is being saved. Now, because this data has a very lengthy name, I want to make sure that I do not make any mistakes. Okay. So, let me type the name of the file. Remember, uh, to start with, we are just trying to observe how one single file will look like. Okay. Now, there are a means by which you can you know automatically read the strings, but right now I will try to keep it simple, I will try to type the name by myself. But it is very difficult to do it if you have a series of files, say you want to do time series analysis and you have 100 or 200 files of these in a folder. We will see how to work with multiple files shortly, but for now I am going to type the name of the file and I'm, I have specified the path that is where the file is located in my system. All right. Now, let us see how the data looks like. Okay. What is contained in the data? You can see the latitude longitude information is given, it is the data creation time is given the projection is given, datum is specified as WGS84 and towards the end the variables are given that is the different variables that are contained in the netcdf file are also given. Now, say I want to access a specific variable, what I do is I can click on data dot variables 
and then I get to see what all are the different variables contained inside the NetCDF file. So here uh, if you notice closely root zone soil moisture is named as RZSM. Okay? It is saved with a particular name. For example, latitude within quotes you can see it is saved as LAT and longitude is saved within quotes as LON. So what happens is whenever you are importing a file into Python and say you want to extract a specific variables, let it be root zone soil moisture or longitude or latitude, you need to first find out what is the name with which these variables are saved inside the file and then you use commands to extract those specific variables. Okay? Okay? So now that we know how each variable is named like, let us try to visualize the root zone soil moisture data. So among the n number of variables present, we will be using just 3 that is latitude, longitude and root zone soil moisture. As I mentioned before, we are going to now extract the 3 variables that are required for visualizing the root zone soil moisture data. So I am going to type latitude equal to data dot variables within square brackets and quotes lat. Okay? Name in NetCDF file for latitude is LAT lat and similarly the name of longitude in the NetCDF file is LON long and the name of root zone soil moisture in the file I am going to use it to extract the variable RZSM. Okay. So now we have extracted the latitude, longitude and root zone soil moisture data. Let us see how it looks like. Okay. For example, if I want to see uh, what values are contained in latitude, I just type latitude and then the coordinates are visible to me. Similarly, I can see the values contained in the array longitude and I can also see the values that are contained in root zone soil moisture which has been extracted to soil moisture underscore RZ, the values you see in front of you. Okay. Now let us try to visualize the same and as before by now I hope that you are familiar with the basic commands used to visualize raster data in Python. So we will use the plt.imshow function to plot and for the color bars we have plt.color bar. Okay. So let me directly use these functions. plt.color bar So this is how the plot looks like. You can see the legend it is from 0 to 0 0.7 and as before we can make the figure more legible by adding the title, by adding the um, x label and by adding the y label which by now I am hoping that you are familiar with. Okay. So now what we did is we have downloaded the data. We have um, extracted a single file. I have looked at the variables that are contained within the NetCDF file and for plotting what we have done is we have extracted just 3 variables what we will be requiring that is latitude, longitude and the soil moisture information. So it is root zone soil moisture data that is being shown here. Now as I mentioned earlier say you have 100 or 200 files uh, located in a folder, 
you can't go on type the name the lengthy name of each and every file isn't it you need to automate the process or you need to use a certain function that is going to do this easily so as the next step let us try to work with multiple files multiple netcdf files in python so as i mentioned earlier for this i am going to call glob and numpy okay glob glob and numpy so as mentioned before in case you don't have this installed any of the libraries whatever i mentioned in the tutorials in case you don't have this installed please go to the command prompt to install it and then you import the same in python so because i have already installed these i'm directly going to import globe and import numpy as np so the globe module uh, this finds all the path names matching a specified pattern okay let me reiterate the glob module glob this finds all the path names that are matching a specified pattern for example if i want to read all the netcdf files which are having dot nc extension i can directly use glob dot globe and then specify the pattern within brackets that is dot nc okay now this is a useful part of the python standard library wherein glob is short form for global okay i'm going to set recursive as true now let us see whether the function works so i uh, say i want to see the list of paths you can see all the files which are having dot nc netcdf extension as dot nc will be displayed okay so that i don't have to go and then type the name the lengthy name one by one okay so what we'll do is we'll try to find out how many files are there okay i use the len command which stands for length it shows me that there are 217 files that i have downloaded for the ganga basin for the period from jan 1 2020 to end of august 2020 so um now uh, let us try to read all the variables contained in all these files okay for that let me first create a zero array using np dot zeros function and using latitude longitude and the list of paths i'm i'm going to create a multi dimensional array okay that is why the size of that is specified it is basically a zero array okay a zero array is created now what we'll do is once we have created the zero array i want to use a simple for loop to extract the root zone soil moisture from each and every netcdf file and to write it to the zero array okay that is why the size is specified in such a way that i have np dot zeros bracket length of latitude length of longitude and length of list of paths that is nothing but 217 in this case so let us try to use a simple for loop as i mentioned earlier why we are using it so that we can extract the root zone soil moisture into this zero array okay so i'm going to type for i in range 1,217 you don't have to memorize 217 you can even write length of list of paths okay i'm going to use data set okay and let me try to extract the soil moisture so i'm going to write value dot variables within bracket r z s m that stands for root zone soil moisture 
So, what I am trying to do? I am trying to enter um, these values from each of the netcdf files into the empty array, empty 0 array that I created with specified dimensions. Okay. So, now I am going to type dat. So, every time soil moisture information is read from a file, it should be assigned to the empty array, multi dimensional array that is DAT, DAT. Okay. So, um, if you go through, you will find that at many places there are no data value okay, for um, n number of reasons. So, um, if at all you do not want these values to interfere with your programming, what to do is we, we can easily represent the no data values as NAN that is not a number, okay. just uh, simple lines to make it happen. So, for this I am going to use two simple lines I'm going to write whenever the value is less than or equal to 0 assign nan to it by using np dot, np dot nan okay nan is not a number so just to see the same okay so now you see that wherever there are no values it is replaced by nan nan okay All right. So, uh, what we did right now is we downloaded the data, saved it in a particular location and then we learned how to extract variables from a single netcdf file and here we also saw how to read the n number of netcdf files which are available at a particular location okay? and then how to extract the variable of interest which in this case is root zone soil moisture into the empty multi dimensional array. Okay. Now, let me take your attention to a slightly different topic which is known as trend analysis. So, um, here as part of this tutorial we will be trying to perform man kendall trend test sometimes it is called as the mk test it is used to analyze time series data to understand whether they are consistently increasing or consistently decreasing okay monotonic trends and it is um, a non parametric test which means it works for all the distributions that is the data does not have to meet the assumptions of normality, but the data should have no serial correlation okay? because in hydrology um, we have time series of data and normally we try to do trend analysis to find whether or not the data is having increasing or decreasing trend. So, just some simple commands on how to uh, conduct trend analysis in Python will be shown. Typically, um, all man kendall test functions have similar input parameters. The input functions required are you know firstly you have to give the vector that is the data and the significance level alpha, the lag that is number of first significant lags and the period. Okay? So, these are the inputs that are required for the function to perform man kendall trend test. So, the man candle test they return a named tuple which contains trend, h value, p value of the significance test, candles tau, man candle score, variance and sense slope. So, to perform the man candle test we need to install pi man candle as shown in the screen. And to install the same, the following command can be used as is displayed here. Let us see how this is achieved in Python. We can see how to conduct trend analysis using the root zone soil moisture data that we have downloaded. 
again you know only a few months of data are being downloaded for this particular tutorial and that is for representation purposes ok. So, let us see how to achieve this in python. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to carry out the trend analysis using the man kendall test mk test ok using the pi man kendall which is a library which helps us to perform the mk test. So, what I try to do first is I try to import the library. So, I have already installed the same now I am importing the same ok. So, um, as an example what I will do is I am going to pick a single pixel ok. I am going to pick a single pixel and then I am going to extract the time series corresponding to that particular pixel. So, if you remember we have downloaded the data for the entire Ganga basin in that I am going to pick a single pixel and then look at the values for that single pixel over the entire time for which I have downloaded the data for. So, let me say uh, 10 comma 10 ok, 10th row 10th column all the values I am picking that is what the colon indicates and then mk dot original underscore test and pix 10 10 that is the value for a single pixel I want to see whether there is any trend. So, you see the output gets displayed as trend equal to no trend, h is false, the value of p is given, z is given, Kendall's tau is given, send slope is given, intercept is given. So, so all these details you get as output when you are trying to use this function. And also let me reiterate, typically trend analysis uh, requires lengthy time series of data. So, whatever you see here is for representation purposes only and this is for one single pixel for which the values you see are displayed in front of you. Okay, this is for one single pixel and the time series it is it's just a few months. Okay. All right. So, um, alternatively you know uh, if you are interested um, let me try to introduce you to something known as spider. You know uh, the same set of commands as you used in Jupyter notebook it can be carried out through spider which is nothing but a free and open source scientific environment written in python for data analysts. So, if you just go to the anaconda navigator uh, you can click on launch button and spider gets launched and this is the screen interface that you see in front of you. So, uh, what you do is if you want you can go to tools and preferences and change the directory ok. The current working directory can be changed. So, uh, spider it is included by default in the anaconda python distribution wherein as I mentioned earlier you can directly launch the spider and an interface like this shows up and if you want you can change the current working directory to any folder any any directory ok. The location I can even uh, point to the location where the files have been downloaded and kept ok. And as before even in uh, spider we have to uh, install the packages before trying to import it and as I mentioned before these packages are necessary to handle the net cdf files in python. So, in the in the previous tutorials we have already installed the net cdf 4 library. So, you see these are the net cdf files that are downloaded by you. So, as before you can type the name of the net cdf file ok and then when you right click it tells you whether or not to run the command. So, always um, uh, install the libraries before you are trying to import it and you know it is not mandatory that you work with spider, but if you are more interested to explore I just thought to introduce this section wherein 
uh, you are aware that such uh, 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 facility is made available. So, the syntax and commands that you use in the Jupyter notebook as well as FIDER are same ok, just if you are interested. And you can see three windows here ok. So, what I am trying to do is in this interface I am trying to type the name of the file, the lengthy name of the file. And to make it run, once I finish typing the name of the file, I just need to right click ok. Let me expand. So, I just need to highlight the line and then right click and the run cell option comes up ok, run cell. All right, this is just for um, uh, just to make you aware that spider is also available. So, um, in this particular tutorial, we learnt about small satellite data, how to download the same and we also learnt how to download the data, how to import the net CDF files into Python. And also we got to know the necessary libraries which are used to open the net CDF file and to extract the required variables one by one. And we also saw how to handle when multiple number of files are available. Finally, we touched upon how to carry out trend analysis. So, uh, let me hope that you found this section helpful and I shall meet you in the next class. Thank you.